How's everyone out there doing today? Yeah, Slam Pig Magoo here. Welcome back to the channel. As always, you know, I'd I like to thank the community that keeps coming back here and checking out the videos time after time. You guys are the best. You know, we really got something going good over here, and it's because of you guys, you know? If this is the first time checking out the videos, you know, maybe after you watch it, if you like what you see, you can think about hitting that like button. Maybe even the subscribe button, you know what I mean? It helps grow the channel, makes me get a, a feeling of accomplishment, like I'm really putting out something that has value to you guys. You know, I, I really mean it. <clears throat> but, uh... You know, much like other videos where I start them off bitching and complaining, you know, I'm going to tell you today that I find myself maybe in a good way. You know, I, I reached over into my back pocket a little while ago, and I opened it up, man, and I'm telling you, I, I'm feeling Rothschild. You know what I mean? I got, I got more money than I know what to do with. You know, I opened that thing up, I looked right down, I got a couple 20s in there, there's a 5 floating in there somewhere, a whole bunch of 1s. Man, I'm, I'm swimming in cash. You know what I mean? I, I really am, you know? And, uh, you know, uh, why, I have no idea, you know what I mean? You might be thinking that maybe Mr. Magoo here found himself some financial discipline, but uh, no, that, that is not the case. I waste my money on, on stupid shit, you know, on uh, streaming equipment and, and TV dinners, for fuck's sake, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, maybe, maybe you're thinking your buddy Slam Big here hit the, hit the lottery, hit that billion dollar Powerball, whatever the fuck thing that just happened there, but uh, no, no. I am the most unlucky motherfucker on the entire planet. I ain't never won anything. I never project myself to win anything. I'm telling you, I'm a loser from day one. I'm going to die this way. It's my lot in life. I've grown to accept it. What the fuck can a guy do? You know what I mean? But, uh, you know, in, in all reality, if, if I start to look down and think about it, you know, why I have this money in my pocket is because all of the stores in my neighborhood are absolute shit. I can't find a good place to give my money to for the life of me, man. I'm telling you, all these, it's, oh, it's just a, it's a horror show shopping down here in the ghetto, my friends. <clears throat> in fact, in fact give, give me a minute here. Let me explain it to you. I'll, I'll tell you why. It's bad down here, my friends. I mean, you've heard me talk before about where I live and everything like that, how it's real diverse here, how I live here in the middle of the ghetto and everything, you know? And uh, it's just hotter and hotter every day. You know, it's, uh, it's to the point where you really can't spend your money down here. You can't shop. You know, if you're, you know, if you got those, those blue American eyes, you know, so to speak. Um, you know, the, uh, the consumer experience in the inner city is just so shit, so shit, you know. As, um, as soon as you walk in the door, you are so quick to understand that you are not the target demographic that these people are advertising to. The signs, for the most part, are in a different language. And the products that they advertise, sometimes I look at some of these things and just scratch my head. I can't even identify them, you know? Uh, there is a very large Southeast Asian population uh, in the city that I live in, Cambodians, uh, to be precise, you know? And when you go into the, the, the Khmer markets, you know, the, the Cambodian stores, man, I can't even tell you if it's food or not that's there. You know what I mean? And these businesses thrive. You know, uh, uh, there's like a little China area of the city where uh, mostly all the, the Cambodian migrants are all packed in there really, really tight. I mean, there's, there's tens and tens of thousands of them all there living on top of each other, you know. And their stores thrive because they speak the language. They are their people, so they shop at their stores. You know what I mean? And they take a huge hit in quality. I used to live over on that side of the town, you know. And a couple times I would go into the stores and I would be almost um, disgusted. Some of these stores uh, have, you know, product just laying on the ground on top of like wooden pallets, just piles of stuff, you know what I mean? And they're open-air markets and there's flies everywhere and it's it's... You know, it is a far cry from the hygienic, orderly um, supermarket experience that we're all used to when we uh, buy our food, you know. And, uh, you know, it, it it's just horrible. You, you know, you walk in there and you're just like, everything inside you said, this is, the store is not for me. They are obviously not marketing to me. I am not their target demographic. If they were, they would make this store more uh, inviting, you know, more... 
uh, they would cater it more to get me to open my wallet there. You know what I mean? So you go in these places and you're aware that they're not for you, you know? And the service you get when you are there is just so fucking substandard. You know what I mean? You have to uh, kick and scream through the conversation to get them to understand and comprehend the, the nature of the transaction. You know, if you need something from behind the counter or something like that, you know? Or God forbid you have a question if, if they carry a, a certain product line or, or something that you're there looking for. It's, it's just not going to work out. It's not going to happen, you know? So, you know, as a result... I leave my money in my pocket. I do not shop at these places. I keep going. You know, I keep going down the street. I look for the next shop, you know. And it is bodega after bodega. It is it is little Asian shop after Asian shop, dollar store after dollar store. It's all complete shit, you know what I mean? And I just do not want to put my money in the pockets of the owners of this establishment. You know, much like I just referenced with my story about the Cambodians sh shopping at their shops, I would like the opportunity to build my community through economics as well, you know, but there is just simply nowhere I can go around here to spend my money. So it just sits there in my pocket gathering dust. You know, I wanted to go and get some lunch and there was, there was nowhere, you know what I mean? It, the closest American food I can find is a sub shop owned by a real sketchy Lebanese family i think maybe their family there's a lot of men there's a few women there dude I, I i think they're fucking you know i think they're a cell you know what i mean these people can't be legit but uh you know i just i don't want to eat there you know what i mean frame uh there's a chinese food uh store down the street which is actually owned by white people owned by americans so i mean i'll, I'll eat there but I mean, believe me when I say this, there's only so much lo mein a guy can fucking eat before it starts to hit different. You know what I mean? It's it's uh, I'm not a big fan of the food. Uh, I, I eat there when I'm in the mood for takeout. You know, a majority of the time, only because it's it's you know keeping the money within my community. But I'm not I'm not a huge fan. There's only a few Chinese food things I like. You know. <clears throat> so I mean, it's it, it, it's horrible. You know the. Uh, the consumer experience here in America has changed so much uh, just in the course of my lifetime. You know, the, the corner store, the, uh, you know, the corner whatever eatery, you know, uh, be it a local pizza shop or a little, you know, breakfast and, you know, steak and egg place, whatever the hell you want to call them. You know what I mean? It used to be a place where we could all maybe gather for a breakfast on a, on a Sunday morning or somewhere where we could go pick up some milk and eggs and speak to an actual member of our community that was behind the cash register. We could share colloquialisms, maybe a story about our personal lives and families. But those days, my friend, are long since been lost. <clears throat> you know, the uh, there's nowhere for me to go to, to spend money and put it in the pocket of my people. Uh, there are numerous... Um, immigrant small business credits that these people are given, which allow them to come here and just just buy up uh, the local businesses and the local eateries here. And plus, businesses failing. I mean, it already living in the ghetto, the residents of the city look on in horror as construction project after construction project builds more Section Eight apartments and more. Um, ghetto communities. You know, we're up close to 80% of the housing units in the city are, are Section 8, our affordable housing units. You know, this is not a uh, rich city. It is hard to make profit here. You know, so I understand why the American business owner sold out, you know, sold his, you know, business to someone that does not look like him because the business owner is tired of seeing people that also do not look like him come in and rob from his store and you know treat uh it drain like like they own the place you know what i mean you had to have seen the videos of of the uh what it mob and rob attacks and everything those things happen in little cities most of the time they happen in small privately owned stores and everything like that and i mean you know americans white people business owners they seen the writing on the wall they gtfo you know what i mean and now what's left is is not as maintained as it was when the previous owners owned it, the stores fall to shit. The stock, pr the the prices of the stock on the shelves, 
shoot up through the the roof you know it's uh it's just not the same experience you know what i mean the uh it, it it's just gone you know and that that bothers me you know what i mean that that bothers me a lot because i work for my money you know what i mean i do not have it handed to me it does not come easily you know what i mean i play i pay for it with with sweat and and labor and tears and, and you know hours of my life I do not want to put this into the pocket of the enemy. It is the highest of crime that the money that I labor for, ultimately, every time I spend it, I, I spend it ends up in the pocket of some sort of globalist banking. It bothers me to no end, mostly because that globalist banking will then turn around and use it to fund the genocide of my people of you know they'll use it to sponsor never ending immigration sponsor it to uh cradle to grave welfare services these are things that are destroying uh my country that my people need to expand and survive in you know so i don't want to spend my money at these places but there's nowhere for me to spend it you know, so it, it just sits there in my pocket. Thankfully uh, for me, the local supermarket chain down here is uh, owned by, you know, uh, some, some good fellow people and everything like that. I believe them to be um, Greek, but uh, it's really the only place I can go. And even then I walk in there and I look at the, uh, you know, the employee body. I try to, you know, go through the checkout lines of the people that, that, most look like me because I think the management will notice that you know what I mean that you know customers seem to gravitate more towards you know these people rather than those people so you know maybe they'll notice that these people have a little bit more worth to the company it's the least I can do the least I can do you know I wish I could do more but that has been uh, taken away from me you know and uh, that needs to change I mean I can only uh, throw out a word of encouragement to all of you do not spend your hard-earned dollar at the shops and businesses of the enemy do not spend your money at stores where the owner's children may look at you as the white devil antichrist bigoted whatever the fuck you know what i mean walk right by those businesses do not pay them any mind even if you have to go out of your way by miles uh, to spend your money, which I, you know, most of the time end up doing, it'll be worth it in the long run because your people will be more secure. You see, when we shop from our own stores, from our own uh, people, our own people get a chance to eat. They get a chance to pay their bills. The owner of the little, you know, uh, bacon and steak friggin' Uh, breakfast place he can now put braces on the teeth of his children maybe one is old enough for their first car or perhaps their first semester at college your patronage to his business allows those things to happen and that is more beneficial to us as a people uh, than it is spending your money at your local you know corporate denny's or ihop or, or oh man what what's the one that's always the brawls breaking out at there the, the one where they're killing each other uh the, the waffle hut whatever the fuck it's called you know don't don't shop at those places you know try to find a nice small family-owned buy your people establishment your consumer experience will be better your products will probably be better because they will be taken they will be you know at least your meals will be cooked with maybe a little bit more care than some you know average whatever the fuck throwing something on the grill and just sort of sitting there and, and spacing off you know you, you'll definitely get better service from your people <clears throat> but i don't know i could sit here and rant and rave uh for hours about this you know what i mean and uh, maybe i'm a little hangry because i haven't been eating well lately because i can't find a good fucking pizza but you know it is what it is, I guess. I, I hope my little my little rant uh, maybe planted a seed of thought inside the forest of your mind. And uh, I don't know, maybe if you think deep enough on it, you'll, you'll consider taking action on the things that I spoke about earlier. But um, I'm going to wrap this one up. Once again, huge thanks to everyone who stayed, you know, throughout this long, rambling, nonsensical little uh, video. You guys really mean a lot to me. Um, you know, if you agree with what you heard, if you like the style or anything about the video, feel free to hit that like button. It, it's right down there somewhere, probably next to the subscribe button that you can hit if you want to. Um, 
Let's see, other than that, I do a live stream every Sunday night at 7 o'clock um, p.m. Eastern Time. It's called Live from the Pig Pen. You can find it here on the channel, so another reason to uh, hit that subscribe button. Um, let me see. Other than that, I have nothing else to say. Um, you know, once again, huge thanks goes out to you for listening to the ranting and ravings of a guy in some sort of weird pig mask. It, it, it speaks something about us both, I like to think. Um... But until the next video or the next stream or the next time I get to run into any of you online and get a chance to say hi, I want you to take good care of yourself, uh, stay out of trouble, try to build up your own community, your own people the best you can, because that makes you more secure in your life. We are all one people, and no one is doing us any favors. We have to do them ourselves. So take good care, my friends, and I will see you, I'll see you soon.